A new beat on a mode solo. In Baldur's Gate 3, this is the hardest difficult thing. When you die, the save file gets deleted permanently. Holy crap, she just one shot me. Join me in this video to see how I take on the challenge using God's favorite printers. We pick the best girl, Shadow Kitty. I mean, Shadow Hunt. I picked Minor Illusion here because it's going to help us get the Titan String later. Dear Larian, if you're watching, can I get a Twilight Cleric subcast, please? A girl needs a greater invis. I'm sorry, um, my attention span. Okay, this will be the weirdest stat allocation. So I went 16 decks, right? And 16 charisma. The reason being is I need cheaper prices and to pass one particular dialogue check. Also, we need that persuasion. Hey, leave a comment if you reckon is is hating. Wake up, shadow pretty. Stop touching your box and that's gay. As soon as we regain control, we have to do the most important thing for the build. Shoes off. Hit him with that toggle for that dream. I know you probably think I'm the biggest sharp poster right now, but there's a lot of genuine anime tips and tricks I want to share. Next we meet Shadowheart's canonical girlfriend, but unfortunately for her, we stripped her armor and most importantly, her shoes. Don't forget about her existence. <laughs> hey, it's a solo round, okay? The only thing I should mention here is we're going to pick up everything to sell. Lazelle's armor upgraded our AC to 19. So I'm going to use this pot here. They sells back, so I'm going to, um... <laughs> Anytime you hear first person narration, it's from the recording, which is available as a sleep aid. These cultists are worth 10 XP each. So here's a trick of the control room. If you dash before interacting with the door, you'll get extra move speed when you enter combat. So we already have dash active and I'm gonna do it again. Like check out how far we can move here. Also I'm gonna cast Sanctuary so no one bothers me. I'm gonna pick up from any Mind Flayer body here. They have little gems you can sell. Ayo, hey, those dogs so free. You know what else was a surprise? Shadow Kitty smiling, have you ever seen that? Anyways, our first stop on the beach is to collect a fish from this bucket. So here's the first skip we can do. We can skip the intellect of errors by jumping on these rocks. So over here we find a chest which gives us 5 XP. A hand? No! Can't make it out by myself! I'm perishing here! I guess Gale like, ate in our shoes this playthrough. Not that we actually wear shoes. This engine mine fire has a chance to drop a speed potion. God dang it. Be very sneaky, Shadow Honey. Who knows what this vampire could do? If you didn't know, if you jump over here, there's a chest under a rock that has two speed pods in it, provided that you... Nice view. We felt the nature check and we didn't get it. Hey look, a shovel. 59 gold is pretty sad, but every bit counts on this run. I've played a lot of early access and the grow five puts me to sleep. I will literally do anything to skip it. So I teleport back to cam. If you own the definitive edition, there's some goodies in this chest. I'm mainly after the potion of fly and the strength elixir. So here I'm going to crouch and use my potion of fly. I'm literally using the potion out of desperation just to skip this fight. The cutscene will trigger, but we will be out of combat. I'm gonna float down over here. This chest isn't worth very much money, but I'm gonna pick it up anyway. I'm gonna do some cheeky gardening here. So you know how we picked up that fish earlier? If you give it to Tuffet, that's 15 XP. Oh no, Arabella stepped on a Lego. Next we spoke to Nettie and leveled up. We get our first level in Ranger. This is only temporary for now. I'll go through the proper build when we respawn. Oh, sorry, I got distracted there. So I'm gonna wait until she's out of the room and pick up this Mind Flare Parasite specimen. And that is a mouthful. I'm gonna say Space Gummy from now on. Next we talk to Valo, who's going to be very important. The reason being is he's going to be our pickpocket victim every bloody single day. Okay, so we talked to Arabella's parents here for 45 XP. Is your hair different, Ethel? Anyways, I sold my junk and bought some strength elixirs. Heading back outside, the grow fight is finally done. I loot everything quickly, drink a strength elixir, and meet bestie Raphael. Hey yo. So the reason why we're up here is for the guidance amulet. It's located on the skeleton. Look, I know I'm a cleric now, but I'm gonna change later. 20 gold, really? So I'm gonna jump over here as a cheeky shotgun. I sent these two into the Albear cave and I obtained a space gummy. You know the drill. Be a loot goblin. Speaking of a goblin, we can skip the encounter by disguise as a drow. <laughs> Trickery cleric isn't useful. Don't delude yourself. Well, well. Wait. A drow. 170 XP for this encounter. The next encounter is one easy dice roll. 
netting us 190 XP. Entering the windmill cellar, we found 100 gold. An alchemist fire in this crate at the top of the windmill. Hey, while we're here, we're going to release the gnome. From live, teehee. Shove out the claw! We finally got a level up, and I'm going to pick our second level in Ranger for the Enhanced Lane. We can cover a lot of ground quickly using the Enhanced Lane. Volu seems to be in trouble, so I spoke to him. Heading inside is our final Drow Dialogue. This gives us 120 XP. Volu, sweetie, do you want to come out of that cage? <laughs> After lockpicking Priestess's door, I tried to sneak past his ogre. You don't have permission to be here. And it took me many attempts because I'm bad. Entering a forbidden. You don't. You've set for. So you know what? Finally, I got the Misty Step amulet. Why do we need this? Let me show you. I snuck around Draw Ragslin and teleported behind the locked door. I know this looks visually appealing, but it only has 560 gold. Since we're stuck behind the door, I had to teleport back out. So I'm gonna jump over here, climb down these rocks. I actually didn't know this for a while. There's a skeleton in a bush here, and it has the smuggler's ring. So this ring gives us plus two stealth, plus two sleight of hand, and minus one charisma. It's the toll collector's key, Uwu. Using that key, we're gonna enter this hatch and be loot goblins. 270 gold, not bad. This puzzle was a brain scratcher. There's a pressure pad here, so I just jumped over it. So I found 209 gold in this chest, and I looted the rest of the room. I know, this is pretty boring. I heard you like some danger, right? This next part is going to happen really quick, and is a potential run in there. In this cave of fully deadly traps, and one simple misstep, not to be confused with misty stamp, is going to send you reeling to the main menu. Okay, I'm done with the puns, sorry. We're going to bypass them by jumping on these platforms. The tripwire is in this area, so we're going to jump right to the end here. Here I enter snake mode and I'm gonna jump over. Basically steal this lockbox as quick as you can and teleport out. Because if you get into combat there, that could be a game over. We Kane's rest was our next stomp, and the door got a taste of shadow feed. That cheeky little smirk she just did, oh my god. Damn, 28. Shadow Cutie is so strong. Come. Let me tell you, this room has so much food, it'll last until Act 3. If you're not a paladin. So Shadow Cutie picked up some butter buns. Yo, there's a key in this bottom crane, and that gets me to the center down. So here is where we need a charisma chain. I'm gonna go persuasion, hopefully I get the roll. It's 6 to 9, but I might put advantage on. So here's a little shortcut you can do, you can like, um, just jump across. Give Mummy Ceres the chest. You know, the one that we picked up, a case of Biley Gloves of Favory off Brem. These give advantage on slider handshakes. Since I cast Charm Person on Ceres, I teleported back to the entrance and waited out the spell's duration. Okay, time for violence. My ADHD is killing me. After measuring the shove distance, I set up with a minor illusion and shove her. Go on Shadow Cutie, light the world on fire. So it's just two enemies left, I'm just gonna hide. What? Old mate just ran into- what? After roasting the last end, we appreciate the destruction caused by our favourite barefoot Sharon. The Ton String is our forever bow on this playthrough. And let me tell you, it's so strong that I made a video on it. It is a literal wind button for BG Fring, and I can't express it in words. We go back to camp to steal from Volo. Remember, this is going to be a daily or level up routine for gold. I gave myself guidance here and started stealing. Don't forget the gloves of Fevery here. Volo is one of the safest people to steal from in honor mode. If you fail it, he's just gonna run away and be a little bitch, that's go. it. Okay, decision point here, people. Option one, you can follow along with me on my personal routing to act two for the most overpowered gamer gear. No, in all seriousness, it does turn act one into a joke. Option two, tidy up the Grove quest line before proceeding. See new day, strength elixir. Guidance and steal from bestie. The next part is why I don't speedrun. I cast full clear and due to my bad positioning, I entered combat. Luckily I was far enough away for the enemies to not one shot me. I didn't want to take the risk, so I just used an invis potion and ran away.
We're going to go to Act 2 for some quick retail therapy. I promise it will be worthwhile. Did you know Shadow Sweet is immune to the lesser Shadow Curse? So here's another skip you can do for early Act 2. Hello everyone, Evelyn in the future here. This is an updated method for the Moon Lantern drop. So what I'm going to do is drag this rotting bastard closer. So I'm going to stand on this one. Wherever I command drop, it's going to drop on the opposite side. I'm going to open my spellbone and prepare the command spell. As soon as he drops a moon lantern, I'm going to turn it into turn-based moon. I'm going to go over here, open the basket, and drag the moon lantern into the basket. Now I'm going to exit turn-based. So he picks up his sword and everyone runs away. That's everyone apart from this one hyena. So deal with him however you want. Okay everyone, that's a new method. I'm going to do the kindest thing this playthrough and let the pixie out. Actually, not really. I'm just too lazy to carry it around. Okay, show the cuties done. Anyways, we unlock the Riftwind Town Waypoint and the Waypoint at Last Light Inn. Did you know there's an invis potion here? Okay, so on the top floor of this barn is a chest that is worth a lot of gold. Okay, now it's time to sell all our junk and to spend the majority of our gold at Quartermaster Tally. The first purchase is the UNT Scale Mal, which will protect us for the majority of our playthrough. The AC bonus isn't capped from our dags, which is nice because we'll get plus 5 once we hit 20 dags. Also, the armor is featured in the thumbnail image. Thanks Paige, I love you bestie. Another good thing about the armor is that it doesn't impose disadvantage on stealth. The second purchase is the Cloak of Protection. It grants a plus one to AC and saving throws. Adding to our solo safety nav, the final purchase from Tali is the Amulet of the Harpers, which gives us the shield spell, which might save our life and it gives us advantage on wisdom saving throws. Next we see Arash at Moonrose. The most important thing here is the Risky Ring. So that's going to cost us 14.50. It gives us advantage on attack rolls, but also disadvantage on saving throws. So pretty much this ring and the time string will carry us through Act 1. Whoopsie, I kidnapped Roa. And stole a Drake Throat Glaive. So another trick here is that you can drop the time string on the ground and cast Elemental Weapon to grant it by this glaive. It is time for a race bank. So I'm gonna go ranger here. I'm like an urban tracker for the sleight of hand. So I want 17 in Dangs, 16 in Con. Because we're solid, we can die at any point, yeah? 14 in Charisma and Stealth Proficiency. With level 2, the most important thing was to pick the archery fighting style. Just for the plus 2 to attack rounds. Level 3 is Gloom's Talker. My favourite Act 1 subclass. So we're gonna attempt the Ogres at level 3 here. So I'm gonna open with Hunter's Mark. This gives us a surprise round, yeah? Gloomstalkers get an additional attack on round one called the Dread Ambusher. Since it's a surprise round, I get a free turn. So I attack here on my next turn. Using Dread Ambusher Hide as a bonus action, the enemies don't know where we are. For those in doubt and think Stealth Archer is a late game build, I have broken the AI at level three. So you can pretty much see how this went when I get a free turn every round. So essentially what I'm doing is shoot, thread ambush a hide, and turn. Rinse repeat until your enemies are dead. Okay, I'm gonna cut through the footage now. We get another power spike at level 4. We pick up our first fate called Sharpshooter. It deals an additional 10 damage with a minus 5 on the attack roll. Since we have the risky ring, it's completely offset, like it doesn't even matter. We are literally so powerful right now. We're pretty much gonna turn Act 1 into a hit list. I made a visit to Auntie Ethel. We're gonna need the strength elixir to sustain the Titan string bow. I also bought the invis pods as a backup. Give My next me, agenda was Levita's blessing. I actually found this out recently. No, if you take off your armor, you get a plus four to checks here. <laughs> Shadow Sweetie got branded, and once I got Priestess in private, I went to the high ground and coated my bow in drow poison. I'm actually so used to the stealth archer attack so quickly, she doesn't even have a chance to react. Okay, while I was editing this, I heard the biggest cope during the recording. Okay, here comes the Evelyn confession. To me, honestly, Baromancy's um, A, insurance, and B, therapeutic. Space gummy, yummy. The first space gummy power I usually go for is Cold Awake. I'm just going to summarize it really simply. Basically, when an enemy dies, it explodes. Hey, so remember that ogre that was annoying me earlier? That's where you get your piece of sh If you pass this perception check, you can lockpick it and skip the puzzle. 
Never mind. I don't think I've done this puzzle since 2022. Okay, I looked at the recording just then, and it took me 30 seconds. I'm so glad my brain still works. A bit risky, but I might do the spectator at level 4. The trick of the spectator fight is to attack the drow from the high ground and not get surprised. In fact, it was Shadow Kitty that gave the surprise round. We did about 90 damage on turn 1, which isn't bad considering we're only level 4. I used the Dread Ambush behind, and the spectator had no idea. Next I skip the Bilant with a Feather Thaw Enhanced Lame. So here I'm gonna just use an Invis Bung. It's a bit overkill for these turrets, but I'm being lazy. Does anyone else call it the Saucy Flower? So the actual reason we're here are for these mushrooms, Tim Mask Spores and the Tongue of Madness. Why should a heart so pretty? She looks so uncomfortable now. Hey, so you remember the stool from my Ton String video? You can actually destroy the stool. And you get the Club of Hill Giant String. Once you equip him, it sets your strength to 19. Another one of my trick that I've learned is that you can shoot these deactivated turrets. They give 40 XP each, and there's four of them. So we head to the Mycanet colony. If you talk to Blair, he summons a melee. Hey, so remember the mushrooms were collected? I did his quest so I could get these boots. The boots of Stormy Clamor are so good. Normally I go shoeless with the shadow feet out, yeah? But these are the only boots that I would consider wearing. Speaking of shoes, the gnome gave me hers. Also, we give this lady a noble store. It's gonna pay off in Act 3. Hey, let's sail across the water now. I showed Gek the brand and said I had the shoes, which gave me safe sailing. Hey, do you want to know a shortcut for the Shar Idol? You jump over here and Misty Step will jump onto this area. The Shar Idol's here and you don't have to go through that puzzle. So here's another little shortcut. If you jump over here and if you jump over here, you unlock the waypoint without them stupid platforms killing you. Here is my super secret grim strategy. I gave myself fly and went back to the platform. I then summoned him by attacking the lava oh, valve. You know how I said I had a strategy? We're just gonna throw things at him pretty much. Shoes work really well against him. If the lava runs out, just shoot that valve again if you're Okay, see you, Grim Misty. Oh my god, look at all that stuff we just threw at him. So maybe I should do the Golem Cam, Wubs of Archer Wing. Don't really have to use Darkness Hand. Shadow Bestie poisoned the Goblin Strings, and they all gathered around. Go on, Shadow Kitty, light the world on fire. This is kind of calm again. I almost had a panic attack standing way too close to this barrel here. I feel my gun. What I'm doing here is I'm holding control to see my range. Now I'm going to position my character at the max range. And while still holding control, I left click to attack. This should not aggro the enemies. Draw Ragslin was next. Oh dang it, I got spotted there. He could end my run, actually. Oh my god. So I invest here and ran away. Okay, for my second attempt. I turned into a tryhard. I put magic weapon and elemental weapon on the bow. So that's a plus three bow in act one. I coated my bow in drow poison to great effect. And the AI was so smart. Old mate shoved brawl just to wake him. I'm not gonna risk it here. I'm just gonna invis. Oh my God, this is so annoying. It's like so low. So draw range. And walked past me for some reason. Shutter Heart is hard coded to miss, and I didn't want to take the risk, so I hit and reset the fight. Okay, I'm gonna try that again, the drill poison. I wanted to do that from the very start. Anyways, after the clowny is fine. Another parasite. We get a space gummy for ability drain, which synergizes with my boots. We hit level 5, getting our second attack. I also picked Pass Without Trace, because it gives me plus 10 in stealth. Okay, it took me this long to dye my armor black. I was pretty lazy here, so I attacked the gif in the dialogue. Just a shortcut to the Gresh. Time for the game of cheer, sweeting. So I use my only inspiration point. Please, I really want this bar. 
Okay, I'm just gonna Google this real quick. See which one has the lower DC. They're both 18. Oh my god. No gamer chip buff for us. Shadowheart's so pretty. How many misses do you want, Shadow Kitty? I'm literally just crouched in the corner here. Just to put my hands on everything. Action. Okay, that was lucky. The knife of the Under Mountain King. This gamer knife reduces the crit roll required by one. This is so therapeutic, everyone. I mean, a lot of people get upset over barrel manting. It's always been like a Larian special. Okay, this is just beautiful. Go on, Shadow Kitty. Light the world on fire. Oh my god, she's so pretty. Anyways, after waving to Vlakov, I finally get my favorite headpiece in the game. The Deedom of Arcane Synergy. I'm going to wear it all game because it's slaying. Come. Hey yo. Welcome to Morgana Everlyn. Why, well, today we're witnessing a betrayal of all time between Shadow Cutie and Imposter Milkers. Shadow Kitty, no, how could you? I really thought you wouldn't. Okay, the actual reason we're in here is we get a temporary bless buff. This grants a 1d4 damage to attack rounds and lasts until long rest. Okay, let's tidy up Act 1. Shut up, honey, snipe the Dwega. And we handed that quest in for another buff. Bliss Balls grants a 1d6 bonus to a lot of things, but I only care about the attack rolls, really. Next, we hunted a devil and handed her head in for a gamer sword. So if you're doing a solo run, you want to kill this traitor first. She can hold person new, which ends the game doesn't even have a bloody song. After dealing with the paladins, Shadow Kitty went hyena hunting. She was very careful, retreating after every shunt so she doesn't get spotted. We picked up a space gummy and it went into luck of the far realms. This gives us a guaranteed crit once every long rest. Another reason why we're here is to collect hyena ears. They're used to craft potions of Spain which give us haste. I guess it really is a solo run. Empty words, clearly. I can't imagine being a stinky solo knight. You know, we gotta kill the doggos for Shadowhan. Oh. We literally clean sweep them. Did you know the mimics can't attack you from up here? Someone. Okay, I got Only into combat here, that. and as soon as I started moving, <gasps> what just attacked me? That was weird. He attacked me from down there, okay? This janky, bulked little man almost ended my honor run. <gasps> so I went invisible and noped out of there. Are you okay there, buddy? Like, what are you doing? That's right, I got my revenge. Hey, just between you and me, alright? Here's a little game of secret. So, the enemy is invisible, right? If you ping the portrait, you can find out where they are. I was expecting a really difficult fight from near. After that near death experience, we went back to Spore and leveled up. Getting our first dip into Rogue. Oh wait, what's this? Is that a past nine to down? I mean, it's a solo run, but I want Glut just to kill him, all right? <laughs> Next, we fight the big, bad Bulent. Shadow Kitty coated her bow with the oil of accuracy. Then the bullet jumped out of the ground, putting us into combat. The first arrow was firing. Only dealing a paltry 26 damage. Feeling disappointed with the damage, she then trod an ice arrow. Only 26 damage, bruh. Okay, 41, not bad. Shadow Kitty then used a bonus action to dread ambush a hind. The stupid Lanchak had no idea where she was. It's your turn, Shadow Sweetie. Okay, I'm just gonna drop some general advice here. These lava methods do give 75 XP each, which is a lot, but it does come up with a surprise round. I've actually had one solo wipe here. So yeah, be careful or don't do it at all. It's 
be nice lady as well. If there's anything to take away from this video, just check out how strong stealth is. I know these enemies aren't strong, but I'm literally succeeding every stealth check here. I've carefully planned my build, gear and proficiencies for my own unique playstyle. I find it really rewarding to see it in action and if I help out anyone else. Okay, we picked up a passive here. We do 1d4 extra radiant damage. I'm literally standing right next to him and he doesn't know. Must have been the wind. Just as you find your flow, you slip. No, not the shadow buns. Is that a scroll of greater invisibility? Did you forget about Auntie F or Miss Evelyn? No, I do want that plus one dags, but I decided she was too much of a risk without the ring of free action. So I'll grab the hag here next time. We start our adventure at Moonrise. Last video I left the hag alone because of the risk of mild. Can you tell me why we're doing the hag? Board recording Evelyn. The only reason I'm doing it is for the plus one dex and the game of red. Any time you hear first person narration like that, it's from the VOD, which is available as a sleep aid. Before we can take on auntie we need a very special ring which you can buy from mirage the ring of free action you ignore the effects of difficult terrain and cannot be paralyzed or restrained any form of whole person is a game over for our solo run and all the hags images can cast it okay this is a final warning do not do the hag solo unless you know what you're doing because you will warm i'm just gonna stake and walk past the fireplace here soon we found shatterheart jumping into battle with the hag's pawns After such a difficult encounter, we found ourselves surrounded by perilous tramps, which Shadowheart used in hand swim and featherfall to bypass. She's just gonna jump here just and right to the end. Okay, if you mess this up, pray of high AC and you dodge all the rolls. Okay, I messed it up. Oh, okay, not. Nah. All right, so I'm gonna use a special arrow on her. I want the most damage possible. Oh my god, what was that damage? Holy I'm gonna turn off cold awake here in case I kill her. Do you think she's low enough? I'm not too sure. So I'm gonna potion a speed here. And how much damage does this do? 9 to 17. I'm just gonna hit her like um softly. Okay, that should be the fresh on. Wait! Uh. So you can roll here, but um I'm just gonna play it safe and give Marina. A wise choice. Here. Shadowheart really doesn't care. Acquiring the hag hair increased our dexterity to 18. Increasing your attack rolls by plus one and our AC by another point with the UNT. Before teleporting back to Acte, we grabbed two speed potions from Ethel's workshop. One on the stone table and one in this chest. Listening back on the recording, there's a pretty sus confession coming out. We're gonna clear Moonrise first because I, I like murdering people. I found it, it's like a little mini game clearing out Moonrise. We made our way to the top of the tower. So I'm gonna kill this ogre here. Okay, so we're gonna talk to Sorel now. She's gonna walk past a dead ally and not care. Wait, what? Yeah, what happened here? I'm wondering what's going on. Believe this mini game, it's like, I don't know how it works. It's all right, we, we got the um, dice round. Our position, Shadowheart in the corner of the room. We're ready to assassinate Sorrel. I'm gonna hold control here and left click as fast as possible. So we got two attacks off and that's There's plenty an fine. Parasite in that corpse. You should take a look. Ooh, that person was annoying me. I think Shadowheart was very quiet. She was an Spotted doing this. Hey, you missed one there, Shadow Kitty. Okay, so does anyone else's game do this? Like, I fired me arrow. Hello? Arrow, where are you? Every paladin we kill from now on, we're going to collect the plate armor to sell for loads of money. So in this room, there's like a mimic here, so I'm just gonna attack it to not be surprised. We're gonna get Kefric Storge here before heading down a level. I snipe the necromancer at the rooftop. which gave us a level amp. I used this level one for my second level on Rogue. I can now use dash or disengage as a bonus action. 
I'm literally standing right next to you. It must have been the wind. Okay, there was a lot of murdering, and this is how it went. Do I risk it? That's so cute. hate it when they take two shots instead of one. So I'm gonna pick up this shipping crane. That's gonna give us two tadpoles. I'm gonna put it into whatever. Hey, can we appreciate the stuff rolls here? Literally how? I don't understand that. Next was the inner part of the prison, which triggered my PTSD. A word of warning here, people. Don't go near the chasms. Fell for my trump. Oh, shit. After that traumatizing flashbang, I took on the prison warden. Then I went for the goodies upstairs. Who needs a lockpick when the time strings that strong? Got a feather fall there, which I'm gonna use very shortly. Using that feather fall, I go into a hole. Hey, hey. I found myself a space gummy, and that wasn't enough. I had an addiction to these things, so I stopped by the kitchen to hunt down these gnolls. These gnolls have ears, and the barbed arrows are really good. So if we need a bit of damage, we'll use the barbed arrows. And this lady has a tadpole, gonna put it anywhere. So I'm gonna change to the gloves of favoring. Just pray that we hit this roll. With your Can you stop staring at me, Biff? Seen? Okay, we got the gold. Let's go. I'm gonna go to Tally since we leveled up. Trade or Tally is our ticket to the end of Act Two, boss. So I made an investment here to get her attitude to max. We made a lot of gold, especially after murdering all the Moonrise Paladins. So she's got holy water, free smoke battle bombs, I want that. We're also looking out for arrows and mini targets. I'm gonna buy this blood mask and use it as my main elixir now. Also, we're gonna buy the shade clinger armor here. Do we really need a fish? Hey, let me show you this trick with the shade clinger I just bought. So we're heavily obscured, I'm, I'm gonna put it on. We have the clinging shadows, which gives us advantage on saving throws. Now if I swap armor, still on, and it's permanent now, we don't have to be in the shadows. I learned that trick from Celzira, who also does um, solo runs, and I changed my elixir to bloodlast, putting it to good use. So I'm just gonna hide here and just go here. Okay, we're gonna have another bonus round. Huh? Okay, so the solution here facing Sao is middle, right, left. If you're playing a Shadowheart Origin character here, you don't have to do any DCs. She's so pretty, I'm not simping or anything. Okay, so the whole purpose we went in here, we have a plus 4 up to Int until Long Rest, we have a plus 5 to Wisdom until Long Rest, and also a plus 5 to the Rizma. Okay, I don't suggest taking the dagger, because it's a pretty tough fight, so we're just gonna um, cut ourselves. Also, Evelyn, please remove the cut ourselves comment later. So the toughest boss out of the form um, siblings is Fizzabong. If you fail the dialogue check, make yourself go here. He's too fat and too big and you'll get stuck over here and you'll just exchange arrows for like 10 years. So that's the backup plan we fight him out here. I try hard it a little bit here. I used the silver pendant from Act 1 to give myself guidance. I first my shield because I'm a dumbass. Damn, we have a 12 to 20. Yeah, 21's pretty tough. I'm gonna inspo him. I guess it's plan B. Hey, gross. Yep, it's definitely plan B here. We're just gonna chip away at the enemies. So I'm gonna jump over here. I'm gonna kill this zombie before heading out. So I'm gonna dash you in my last action. So he's got immunity to slashing, piercing, and bludgeoning. Also immunity to thunder, which sucks. 
You know what would have been awesome? The Naomisa, this little hand crossbow, does force damage instead of piercing. And there's a couple of bosses in Act 2 that are pierce immune or resistant. That being Fizzabon, the Shambling Man, and Merkle. I made a big mistake last episode. Whoopsie, I kidnapped Roa and lost my chance at getting the Naomisa. Anyways, this went on for a while. My average was like 10 damage around, and that was with special arrows. Yeah, it took me 17 combat rounds. The next form was the Toll Collector, and I can't pronounce her actual name, alright? Oh yeah, I sent my money back to camp, so I'm literally just gonna go attack a skull man. It's gonna teleport, and I'm gonna attack it again. So we're just gonna knock away this skull here. I mean, bonus action hide's pretty broken. I did the biggest mistake here, and my heart was pounding. I killed a skull while next to the toll collector and turned into Gom. We got saved by our high AC. So I'm gonna shoot here. She's got 7 HP now, so I'm gonna... I'm gonna kill her then jump. I was nervous about the explosives. I'm like, is that the run over? See, I still make mistakes even though I play this game on that. Yeah, whatever, I don't care. Hey, so this week I learnt there's a treasure room under these floorboards. Then Mason's Guild was next. I'm here literally for a guaranteed scroll spawn. Before we can get that scroll, we need to kill some baddies. Hey, if you didn't know, there's a new way to ping invisible enemies. You keep on the key to ping, and you use that keybind on an enemy portrait. I found him. So here's the scroll and knock, which I'm going to use to skip the shard gauntlet. I'll do the shard gauntlet legit, but I'll avoid the platforms because it will ruin your run. Okay, I'll show you a little trick here, people. You can see the shimmering of the fish beam all over there. So I'm just going to use the fire arrow here. And I'm just going to attack from the high ground. And this is very therapeutic. Okay, Shadow Kitty leveled arm. And here's a big power spine. We're gonna go to Assassin. So we reset our action and bonus action at the start of combat. And the way I play, we're gonna have so many first turns. We also get crit against surprise creatures. And we have advantage on attack rolls against creatures that haven't taken a turn yet. Oh my god, the screen shame. Let me try to show you how strong Assassin is. So normally when I enter combat, I get free attacks. Two martial attacks and a Gloomstalker attack. If I attack out of combat, initiate combat, that could be four plus attacks. So I purposely went into the combat there. So I did two attacks out of combat, and I have two attacks now and a Gloomstalker attack. The like if Yankee ambush was next. Yeah, I'm gonna enhance sleep in case I need an escape. The so hell I'm gonna do it right is just gonna snake mode until I trigger the ambush. And whatever you do, did not directly fight them. I'm gonna sneak out here. Okay, we have a surprise rune, I might use it. Can you see how strong Assassin is? Like, seriously. And do I have another action? Can you believe that? Okay, we'll kill this archer on the next turn on Bell. But damn, he's right next to me. This will be a wipe if you, um, if you take him on right now. I'm gonna see if I can try to kill him. No, I'm just gonna end this there. The enemies couldn't find me, and I reset the fight. Okay, so he's a Shadow Curse creature. I don't want to play with that. I'm respecting the Gip Yankee a lot. They will kill you. So it's gonna come back as a Shadow creature. Who needs to pass the days here, huh? Money, money, money. Remember, no witnesses waiting. A trail poison. Right turn this and we'll start attacking. Okay, this is clean. I'm gonna turn base it from now.
That is a huge first round. That was crazy. We did 356 damage before combo. That was such a comfy battle. Holy crap. Did not expect it to go that well. Who needs a key run? Shadow Sweeney, let's take our new sub class for a test run. With Assassin, you get a critical hint on anyone that is surprised. With my Dread Emperor short tag, I decided to weaken the Wraith for next turn. Since the enemies are surprised, we get a free turn. Go on, Shadow Kimi, blow up everyone. This is so relaxing, you know. I'm just gonna hide there and I don't think that can do anything. The hiding is perfectly balanced. So they're going bestie, I'm gonna teleport now. If you're right, uh, Jahira, you're all right with the meaning. Okay, four smoke powder bombs and four holy water and three arrows of many targets. Next, we had the last lot in defense. If we have initiative on markers, we don't have a stupid drawn out fine. Okay, we got her. Now, all we have to do is kill him in one turn. Okay, that was a huge attack, actually. Hashtag just pawn string things. Maiden's milk. The next dice roll completely changed the fate of this run. Oh my god, are you bloody serious? We need a bloody resistance. I hate this. This is stupid. I hate this. She's only temporarily hostile. <laughs> yes, sweetie, I did turn on non lethal. What? What's going on? Oh my goodness, look at this turn order. Isn't this so fun? Okay, this is just beyond stupid. After being shocked by what happened, Shadow Keep drank an Invis potion and started running away. What happened next sent my heart and racing. Jahira, you're gonna get me killed. Okay, so she revealed me for a spell there. Yeah, great, this is so fun. Okay, I actually counted here. I have to survive 19 turns. A few of them went for Granny, that's good. She kind of deserves that. Um, note to self, don't knock out an Isabel. After the most anxious wait for my turn, I drank an Invis potion. All we have to do is wait one more round. After Granny died, we finally got out of combat, and here's what Vod Evelyn had to say. Okay, they're literally on the run. Okay, so for a bit of context, Merkel is very resistant to piercing damage, and I've tried many different techniques and strategies over the way, and I found the most effective one relies on Tally for some supplies. So during the Vod, I was very lost. I was not expecting this at all. Anyways, I um let off some steam with some violence. Look at that turn order, that's just stupid. Okay, if you didn't know, if you use the arrow of many targets on surprise enemies as an assassin, every single hit is a crit, baby. It's pretty satisfying deleting things. Okay, I'm just gonna run now. I used my bonus action dash to get far enough to flee combat. I do this to reset combat and to get the surprise round again. I do enjoy my free round of guaranteed crans. I did this rinse repeat until they were all down, and it actually didn't take that long. We've lost like complete in, not in the way that I actually wanted. Let's go deal with a few encounters nearby. For the next encounter, I really want you to put on the ring of free movement. Ring of free action, sorry, my bad. So these creatures are mean locks and they can paralyze you. And trust me, that's something you don't want solo. That's one down. That's two down. Here we go. Amanda paralyzed, they have paid off. Because if we got paralyzed there, we would have been critted for days. I'm gonna kill the hounds here. To trigger the encounter, you have to shoot these standing torches. So I'm 
gonna go for the alpha first here. It doesn't matter where we are, and this is awesome. Okay, we're just gonna have a free round on him. Okay, here's a little trick you can do. So I went crouch and I'm gonna fire a body darkness arrow here. I tell me to crouch again and touch the raven. See, we are surprised, but we're not in combat. Oh, okay, we're still stealthed. I mean, I'll take that. I did actually get into combat, but I just went down to one of the sight lines and, you know, just him. Okay, we're gonna have another bonus round here. Next, it was time to deal with Shadowhunt's personal crystal line. So it was off to the Shargorn land. With this first puzzle, I'll memorize the puffing. Okay, so I'm just gonna go from this side, walk down here, go around and touch the thing. The portal's proved very difficult for a single character. I just didn't have the action economy to keep up past round one. On our first turn, I destroyed three portals and then used a speed potion for the last one. On the next round, four portals appeared and I only had three attacks this time, so I did what I could and then fled combat. A gentle touch pays off. I like how he robbed him, then went in the fudging. How many more stupid portals are there? I went back into combat and a big enemy spawned, which proved to be an issue, since after Morning Lord's Radiance from the first day, any radiant damage I do gets reflected four times as much back at me. Yeah, that really hurt me. Get some rest. Yo, that was a greater in Bizcom. Okay, what you want to do here is still the potion of Spain. I'm going to stand back here and start attacking him. I'm going to do everything in my power to kill him. I used another barbed arrow. And another barbed arrow. I'm going to use the potion of speed here because I don't want him to kill me. After dealing with Balthazar, Shadow Cutie takes on the Shard Trials. Hey, come on, it's not that bad. The soft step trial was first, so we're just going to wait for this one to turn around. Jump over this pressure pine. And jump through this window. That's the first humble gem. The self same trial was next. So the trick of this one is I'm gonna strip Shadow Giddy here. Another another of Lady Shah's trials that her initiates must face. Oh my god, this editor Evelyn edit that out combat. later. Don't forget to put on your gear again, sweetie. Okay, we're gonna have some Shadow Heart on Shadow Heart action. Hey, so um where was that humble gem came? Okay, a word of warning with the next trial. The patch six made it really janky, so I do not recommend it. If you're going to attempt this, at least have a camp holing. Like seriously, it's so buggy and janky. For the safety of my solo run, I skipped this trial. Usually I'll snipe every enemy in the library hand, but I was too stubborn to get rid of Morning Lord's Radiance. One attack did 20 damage to me. So I'm just going to kill that one enemy and grab the book. Okay, we got the book. I'm going to go for this button over here. That was strange. I got caught on the pillar there. We got the Spear of the Night, an important instrument in Shadowheart's quest. Shadow Kitty hunted the Displacer Beast before it even noticed her. After she took down the beast, she fled combat, getting herself into a better position. He gets pretty tough. I'd take this fight pretty seriously. We're going to use a little drill poison here. That's a nice little gem, sweetie. Okay, this is a formal warning, yeah? This platform is bugged. Do not get on it unless you have a spare companion or you have short rests available. Because Larian has not fixed this for several patches. What I'm gonna do here, yeah, I'm just gonna go potion of fly. Then I'm gonna skip the platform by flying down here. There's no time to waste. Technically, you could get away with free gems, but the way I do it, I need zero gems. I'm just going to use our scroll and knock here. 
We're nearing the end of Act 2, and I need a solution for Merkel. I killed Roa, who had the Naya Musa, so we're stuffed there. Is there any traitor that I didn't kill? Oh, the short statured lady. Okay, let's go back to the Mykonid colony. I mean, I don't hate her some money here. We're going to buy any spike powder, any holy water, so I'm gonna level up here and she'll restart. So I went Rogue 4 and I'm gonna go ASL into decks. Okay, we're 20 decks now. The Vac gives us plus one to Ace Hay, thanks to our UNT. And another plus one to our attack rolls, which is huge. After we leveled up, Smoke Powder Holy Warner. Okay, it's time to say goodbye to all of our temporary bars. Shadow Cute had a Shadow Slime. Okay, she's got a Blum Blast, so I might take that one. Oh my god, an Elixir Cloud Giant Strength. I'll definitely buy that. Okay, so Long Rest. Don't pick any Camp Supplies, Partial Rest. Hey, oh my god. The Elbow Camp, that's so cute. Oh no, Bestie, come back. Smoke Powder Holy Warner. Rest. Cute little owlbear, bye. Rest, purchase, EP. Smoke, powder, holy water, slime, bye. Rest, buy, rest, buy, rest, buy, rest, buy, rest, buy, rest. Oh my god, I had enough of this, okay? Okay, we're gonna actually respang so I can do it quicker. In a partial rest here, and this will be the last time. I'm sick of doing this. So the gimmick here is every time you level up, she restocks. So level up, buy, rinse, repeat. Okay, enough shopping. Let's go finish act two. What do you need of me? My lady. Nothing that you are not more than capable of. The punishing of a wicked Salunite. All you have to do is use the spear to end her light. I have felt you coming, Sharon. Hey, hey. Using the spear of night, we're going to end the Salunite's words and become Shah's dark justicia. True death at last. You are Shah's child after all. Not many of you have seen this path. I'm not gonna lie, it is a bit dark knowing what happens through Shadowheart, but it felt appropriate for us, Hilaran. Your pain is now your power. Wield it true. Shadowheart became a dark justicia and got given a task by Lady Shah to punish Kevrick Vorm, who betrayed her. And without the Night Song, the source of his immortality, he is now vulnerable. So let's go end him. We haven't done this in a while, so I'm going to put the Titan String on the ground. And where's that um bloody Drake Front Glaive? This gives us plus one to our rolls and it adds 1d4 elemental damage. So I'm going to put on the Shade Clinger armor and take it out. Put on Char's Aegis there for the AC. I might put on the Conduit Ring for more damage. So Kefric is pretty high AC here. Okay, so here's the plan. Potion of Fly, Oil of Accuracy, Haste Potion. And I'm gonna run in there. Combat starts and the first thing I do is fly close to Kefric. Right here and let's see what damage I can do. That is huge actually. That is not so huge actually. Might use a special arrow here. So I'm gonna invis and walk up. I played a really safe hand, because two smarts will end your run. Okay, that's Kefrig Nan. That tentacle was colossal. Hey yo. Before we go down to the Mind Flayer colony, Shadaki drinks a Cloud Joint Elixir, setting his strength to 27 and increasing her carry weight after some exciting inventory management. So let's see what we got. We got four smoke powder barrels, 23 alchemist fire, 27 holy water, 30 smoke powder bombs, and a smoke powder satchel. Yeah, this is gonna be fun. Mind flayers and civilians. Side by side. That sounds like free XP. So we got 790 XP for purging the pods. Okay, it's time for the hardest boss of Act 2. The platform lift. Okay, this is your last and final warning. Do not use this platform elevator without resetting your world. So I'm going to go main menu here so to force the save. From the main menu, load into your honor mode save again. This resets the worm and the elevator jank. This method has been really consistent and I highly recommend you do it. Otherwise, we get stuck on the elevator. Okay, let's see what's gonna happen. Yo, we did it. Merkel is a block of our build. He's very resistant to pitching damage. So let me tell you the game plan. So what I think I might do, run? I'll potion a fly, then I'll oil of accuracy, then greater invis. I'm going to fly on this platform and attack this Mind Flayer. If you don't kill the Mind Flayer, he'll stun you. I'll start attacking Isabel and finally Tefring. Okay, so let's do it. And 
and I hope the rolls are in our favour for this one. Okay, that is an awesome Nova. Okay, we still have um, our action point here. Oh no, that's so bad. I might throw a potion to speed here, just to save my bonus action. Okay, let's try a special arrow. Okay, that's what we wanted. Who would win? The Apostle of Merkel or one Shadow King? Okay, game face on here, people. So we're going to fly over and open my inventory and sort by Feral Balls. So I'm going to put the haste floor at the front here. I'm going to drag everything out of my inventory by holding shift and clicking end to end. So everything's down. If I move away, it's going to opportunity attack me. So I'm going to use a misty step here. Okay, we're going to select a fire arrow here. Go on, Shadow Cutie, light the world on fire. If you recognize this lady, leave a comment and I'll heart her. We picked up Kefrick's Neverstone and went through the portal. Wait, what? I'm so sorry, Mummy Minty. Another parasite. Um, oh my god, how much damage was that? So I was a 45 on the attack roll. Of all the other bonuses, it added up to 16. Kethrick is defeated. Look worrying there, Shadow Hunt. I just want to watch this cutscene for a little bit, actually. Just admire Shadow Hunt's cuteness, you know? Just, um, Shadow Feet climbing up the ladder. Shadow Feet was rudely interrupted during her beauty slam. It turns out that Gifyanki monks ambushed us. And like with all Gifyanki in a solo run, you have to respect them. So like, do not muck around, dear. I'm just gonna miss you, Stamp. Inside the prism, I was greeted by a surprise. <gasps> that was kind of cute. Okay, it's time for the last battle of Act 2. Okay, this monk has hold person, so I'm going to try kill that person first. And I'm just going to play it safe. I don't want to be in the fireball distance. Yeah, that was kind of scary. Yahoo, a double stun. I'm going to see if we can yate this person. Okay, we have one more attempt at her. Is Shadowhunt hard-coded to miss a wong? Not doing very much damage without the Drake Front Glaive. She has a 55% chance of frame. Do I try hard and use the Elixir Cloud Giant strength? I guess we can buy more in the city and it's like a solo run, like not take the risk. Okay, it's a 70% chance now. <gasps> Yummy, space gummy. <laughs> Isn't she staying pretty? It's space gummy time. Mind Blast is really good for the sun. Mind Sanctuary is definitely my favorite because it gives you haste. Black Hole is also very useful. And the rest are kind of whatever. Okay, that's literally everything. Hey, did you want to try this build? A dearest viewer named Paige has created an incredible guide. So please go check it out. It's very detailed and I can't recommend it enough. That's a cute face. I missed it so much. Our act free adventure starts off at Rivington. I can't believe this homeless child interrupted us. I can't find my mum. Get lost kid not my problem um this next part involves super exciting shopping so please stick with me as a provence context our first stomp was to see boney we spent five thousand gold for a statue goddamn but somehow i managed to make that back by selling some armors next i put on the gloves of thievery for advantage on slider hand janks stealing as many arrows as i can from the rivington general so the most important arrows are the arrow mini targets dragon slaying arrows will need at least five for one turn answer okay a little bit of cheeky foreshadowing I might have done over 800 damage in one turn this playthrough. I skipped the Steel Watcher checkpoint by flying to the Swordian, stopping by Damphalons for a few items, the Elixir of Cloud Giant String, which sets your strength to 27, which is huge with the Time String. The Oil of Accuracy adds plus 2 to our attack rolls. I bought a Fiend Slaying Arrow for Raphael. And lastly, the Cloak of Displacement. At the beginning of the Wearer's turn, the Cloak activates, granting enemies disadvantage on attack rolls. This lasts until you take damage, deciding to long rest for the night. Shadowheart 
contemplated being Shah's right hand whilst bearing a wound on her own hand. She very well knows that Mother Superior must be purged. We got a statue in camp now of Shadow Cutie, you know, with the dog chair out and everything. The statue grants a 1d4 bonus to attack rolls and saving throws. That's so awesome because it's permanent now. Charessa's Karance was our next dom. And no, it's not what you think. It's even better. So we're going to fight this mind player here. Yo, what the hell is that? You have one word. Tell me, what will you be? Shadow Kitty will be very powerful this playthrough. You are more than powerful. We got a buff called Rapture. It gives us a 1d6 bonus to attack rolls, ability checks, and saving throws. This lasts until the next long rest, which is good because we're not going to rest anymore. He needs a city pass when he can just fly past the branch. Our first stop in the low city was at the Wine Festival. So here's my trick for Korra. I'm going to use an Arrow of Darkness and as soon as I shoot it, I'm going to go into turn base with Shift and Spacebar. So I'm in the cloud now, I'm gonna switch to melee and stab her. This starts the Unholy Assassin quest line. Old mate shows up and tells us, we must murder once more and remove our victim's hand. And Navis top I like to do is here, for the many arrows or many targets. Same trick your arrow of darkness and grab the arrows cause they're free now. A quick shopper fits for some arrows. Did you know the arrow of undead slaying works on answer as well? Is that two scrolls are great or in his? I went to Devil's Phoenix. Skipping straight to the second floor by just flying to the balcony. In this chest is the Mask of Soul Perception. You gain a plus two bonus to attack rolls. Continuing the Unholy Assassin quest line, we find Nesha, one of the murder victims, outside the Blushing Mermaid. Same technique here, Darkness Arrow, turn base, swap to my knife and stab you, obtaining her hand in the process. After our second kill there, Old Mage approached us and gave us a keen pass phrase to Candle Hollow. If you fail this check, you can just move the painting. Sicalius Uwe. I want to kill Dolly here, but it can kill you in one hit. I'm going to use the Elixir of Vigilance here for the plus five to initiative and I can't be surprised. But that counters his alert feint. We're also going to have the Ring of Reaction so it cannot be paralyzed. While I'm in the shadows, I'm going to put on the Shade Clinger armor and swap back. This gives me the Clinging Shadows condition, giving us advantage on saving throws. I also dropped my Time String and used my Glaive's Elemental Weapon ability on it. This time I'm going to go for Cold Damage because it answers me into the Thunder and Lightning Damage. I spelt Trace here for the stealth bonus and long shiner. I wasn't taking any chances here. So I shot a few arrows at him at max range. We're only in battle with him, we're just gonna. Okay, so I spoke too soon there. I'm gonna fire an ice arrow. Maybe a lightning arrow. Okay, we got a crit there, which is really good. You know what else is really good? Once we killed him, I'm gonna dash here and head towards the entrance. I'm just gonna exit and come back here. On Dollar's body is the Dollar Amaris. When you land a critical hit, it deals an additional 7 damage. But let me tell you, you don't have to use the knife, you can just use your bow. Trust me, this will skyrocket our damage. The Death Knights accepted our hand as a gesture of goodwill. A grasping hand. Allowing us to talk to Saravang, who was very satisfied that we murdered Korra and Nisha. Although he did give us one final task. All right, let's go, gamers. Yo, one shot, hell yeah. Shutterheart became an unholy assassin, bathing in blood. She still looks pretty to me. The reason we completed this quest horn was for this trade arm. Our purchase has been the Ballast Armor, which gives us aura of murder. Enemies within two meters become vulnerable to piercing damage, unless they are resistant or immune to it. Our time strength does piercing damage. When enemies are vulnerable, they take double damage. There's a sweet spot with the aura of meta and using a bone where you're within two meters but don't gain disadvantage on attack rolls. Our next purchase was the crate of flesh glass. Whenever you score a critical hint you'll an additional one to six force damage. Our final purchase was a second dollar maras. Seven damage on a crit hit and seven damage on a crit hit. The majority of our damage will be with critical hints and since we are an assassin we can guarantee them if we surprise the enemies. This pretty much is our end game build. So speaking of end game build, I'm gonna swap to the Cloud Giant Alexa. Yo, why is that neck so long? What the hell? As we entered Kazadol's dungeon, I leveled up. From here you have two choices. We can either go Cleric or Fighter. I went Fighter for the simplicity, picking defense for plus one to armor class. Okay, the entire reason we're here on is because the enemies are great for XP. For example, this lady is level one with 28 HP. She gave me 400 experience. Yeah, this is pretty much free XP. Okay, if you fail to check here and just like this Brazian. Okay, I want to show you this damage I can do. 
This enemy is surprised, so we're guaranteed a crit. With our Balish armor, we trigger Aura meta. Affected entity is vulnerable to piercing damage. We did 102 damage of the bow. With the Nars and Crater Flesh Glams, we did an extra 32 force damage. Yeah, this is going to get really crazy. That's a lot of enemies. So the little creatures there gave 210 XP, and the wolves gave 400, so that's so much XP. I'm going to Oil of Accuracy and Great Toad and Biz Brim. Let me know in the comments if you want me to update my Stealth Archer gun. Must have been the wind demo, right? No, seriously, I spent months perfecting it. We got rid of half his health before getting into combat. We have to kill him this turn, otherwise we're going to wind. Let's use an undead arrow on him. As the door was one hit from dying, and I can't afford to miss here, and I will die if I don't kill him. Hazardor's dead, and I'm going to Invisian. You know what's an absolute vibe? Arrows are many targets. So we're just going to cloak the enemies who fly here, so the bats will group together and we can smoke powder arrow them. There was just one enemy standing in between me and Kazador. Shadow Kitty ended his existence. She also ended the existence of many others. Don't forget to buy some arrows. Laroic and my snakes. Let's one shot him so he doesn't use his reaction. I'm gonna use a human slaying arrow here. Miss the 95%. Imagine casting magic. Can't be me. When we interact with the South East Wave button, we gain access to the vaults. The entire reason so we're arcane. here is for the scroll, the artistry of Wall. I'm going to do a cheeky technique to make it do hundreds of damage at the end. Auntie Ifl was next. She called me Petal for the last time. The trick here is to use the Ilmata arrows, which stops the mushroom healing. As soon as the first mushroom went down, combat initiated. Honestly, I was kind of surprised that I had enough action economy to destroy all the mushrooms in just a single turn. Having only a bonus action left, I used an Invis Pond, which reset the encounter. Okay, I'm just gonna attack her now. I just one shot her, what the hell? I was expecting the hag to be a lot more difficult. Next one on the list is Oren. I used this particular sewer entrance to skip most of the sewer content. The encounter ahead has a pair of gloves we might need. I cast Greater Invis so I can attack three unstoppable charges without getting spotted. I'm gonna fly up here and attack an enemy called Strangler Link. Once his unstoppable charges are gone, I can set up a kidnap with an improvised weapon and teleport, separating him from the ambush. The bind spike gloves. Your attacks ignore resistance to slashing, pissing, and bludgeoning damage. So here I'm gonna do the same thing using Invis Potion and just bloody skip this barn because it's like not worth it. This is a formal warning. Oren will wipe you if you underestimate her. I'm gonna use my technique for her, yeah? Basically, I'm gonna use a cow giant elixir for 27 strength. I also have the risky ring, which gives advantage on attack rolls. Athletics is also a plus 12, yeah? So if you haven't figured out what I'm gonna do, you're in for a trade, because I love it. I'm gonna potion of envies here and just bloody go for it, yeah? You only have one shot at this. So I'm just gonna walk up to her. I have a 95% chance to throw her. I'm gonna click on her and find a pixel over here. So when it says death, you're good to go, so let's frame. So she's dead, and the Neverstone spawned here. Let me tell you, these enemies are not worth it because they'll stun you. So I'm just going to envious and fly away in. We escaped the Temple of Ball, but it was time for something more personal. Do you know why you are here? If I told you, I'd have to kill you. Mother Superior unveiled her face to us. This lady is Viconia, the one Lady Shan requested that we purge, descending into the House of Grief. We confront Iconia. Give the artifact, and perhaps we will be merciful. Shadowheart chose not to hand over the artifact, and in doing so, gets labelled a traitor by Viconia in front of all of her followers. Unfortunately for her, Shadowheart displays the power Lady Shah blessed her with, proving that she is the rightful leader in Shah's dark justicia. Lady Shah's church does need to be cleansed of you. No, sweetie, it would be cleansed of you. The battle begins, but the odds are very heavily stacked against Viconia. Shadowheart and her loyal Sharons slowly picked off the traders one by one. Until it was just Viconia left. Go on, Shadow Kitty, use that human slaying arrow and slay her. 
Before taking on Shao's final task, we went to the Night Orchid game, stumbling upon a name. I do not want to forget who I am. I like flowers. I like animals. My name is... This is actually so sad. Shudderheart approaches her parents, and then her hand suddenly starts searing with immense pain. Signaling Lady Shah's entrance, she reveals that Shudderheart's parents are followers of Selene, and that their pain fills Shudderheart's power. The Mistress of the Night also restores Shudderheart's memory. Time to remember everything. Only to present her with a very dark request. Jennifer? Jen. Is that you? This request is to kill her own parents and snuff out the embers of her past life. It is done. Shut her heart. Obeyed Shah, sacrificing her own parents, surrendering the memories to the Lady of Oz, becoming her chosen. Sorry, I'm going to need five minutes here. Polished disc looms before you. Shadowheart stands before the mirror. I picked the dark justicia option. Okay, so I've burned through all my inspiration. Just to realise the other option, I didn't even need to roll a dice. We're going to pick the memory that increases our dexterity. Our dexterity is now 22. That is a plus six. I'm sorry, Bessie, you're dead. I'm lucky the explosion didn't do more damage. We reached level 11, getting your second level in fighter or action surge. Never done it with him before, so I'm just gonna throw an in here. The door is unlocked and I put on the bone spike gloves, ready to take on the steel watcher titan. I just love the intro here, it's so cool. If I get close enough, will it have aura murder? Yep, okay. I had to get real close there. I'm gonna use my construct slaying arrows here. It only did 60 damage. I fired a few more arrows. Yeah, this damage is pretty mid. So I'm just getting invis here and fly away. My plan here was to trigger a surprise round and pick off the steel watchers, leaving the time for last. I used that surprise round and critted the enemy. Eventually, I got one low enough that it will blow up. Oh my god, he just tried to grapple me into the explosion. The Steel Watchers went down, and it was just me versus the Titan. You know what would have been an awesome team? Using an Ilmata arrow to stop it from healing. The battle was kind of boring. I would shoot some arrows and fly away to Kaina, making it waste its turn to get to me. Shadow cutie, run! Don't blow up! God, I love blowing shit up. Let's pay the Devil's Fae a visit, shall we? I put on the gloves of Fae Rain and gave myself guidance. Let me tell you, you don't want to fell his pickpocket in. After grabbing the Ritual Pound, we also grabbed a tonic on the way up to give to the first one, disabling the trump. Okay, a little confession. I have over a thousand hours in this game and I haven't memorized the puzzle here. I'm going to put on the Bone Spike gloves just for these balls, right? Does anyone else hate these balls? I've pretty much got the gloves just for these enemies. Harlop was a massive pain. I didn't want him to have a turn because he'd cast charm on me and I missed the first one shot. Thought I hate that ethereal cramp. Chris, sweetie, thank you so much for leaving this comment. If you intentionally trigger an attack of opportunity, this takes away his ethereal escape as a reaction. I might grab this amulet because Shadow Cute is pretty squishy. Okay, I'll go lethargic after this one, so I'm going to infuse and run away. Okay, that really bloody hurt. I'm going to try mind blast him here. Yo, 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 that was it. And 
that's Raphael down. It wasn't clean. Sarah Vok was next. I don't recommend him solo because he will wreck you. That's okay. I'm going to take him on because I'm all about the game of bread. I'm going to all of Akrashine and cast Greater Invis. Stealth Archer is perfectly balanced. Yo, we half pulfed him, and I still have greater invis. What do you classify it as? A human, really? I guess I'll use the appropriate arrow. Okay, that wasn't too bad. That went way better than I expected. Gortash was next. I could have played it safe by signing with him, but where's the fun in that? I mean, I opened these doors, improvised weapon, and path towards the legio. Hello, Gortash. It's waiting. We're just gonna go on a little adventure. Oh dear dear, what happened here? I didn't know what this was about, but editor everyone saw Invis went out. We opened up with a human slaying arrow, dealing 136 damage. The next arrow swept him off his feet. Yeah, I'm sorry about that one. We're going to action search you to commence. With Gortash being unalived, a greater challenge awaits. Look, can it be my bloody turn already? I was getting too impatient with the turn order, so I'll get out of there. Okay, so how close are we? Very close. Finally, we got level 12. We pick War Domain Clearing, allowing us to spend a War Priest Charge to make another attack using your bonus action. Since we leveled up, the trade is restocked. I got an Invis Potion of Popper and bought some Aberration Slaying Arrows. It was time for the Big Bad Dragon and the craziest damage I've ever seen. I used the Lightning Arrow to unlock the passage and next I head down to the chess room. I just felt like doing that. But it's satisfying, you know? Okay, so the skip here is I'm gonna fail the chest three times. As soon as I fail the third one, I'm gonna potion it in viz. This forces the door to break, allowing you to skip all the trials. I set up for the answer fine by lifting the helmet and unlocking the passage for an escape round. Next, I triggered the cutscene and entered combat, only to miss your stem dash and leave the room. Okay, I'm gonna give myself shield of rolls here. I also cast guidance on myself, allowing me to use concentrated blast, which is a method for triggering the surprise round. I use an oil of accuracy and invis potion, which lets me set up for a concentrated blast. I ate his reaction, but also triggered the surprise round, giving me guaranteed prints, utilizing the maximum potential of all of our gear. He also has the aura of murder, allowing us to double our piercing damage. I fired the first dragon slaying urn. Oh my god, that damage. We did 235. Another arrow was shot. Healing 231 damage, god damn. Our third attack was from being a war clearing. Answer took fun and started charging his Nova. If I don't kill him right now, my solar honor run would be over. So we do have a Gloom Stalker attack left, so let's do that. That wasn't enough, so I'm gonna action surge here and fire another arrow. Order. What have you done? If you didn't know, you can attack the Emperor and completely skip his yapping. Anyways, let's go to end game. Actually, before I leave the city, Shadowheart started rowing. We just needed to face the Elder Brain. Unfortunately, tragedy strong. Shadow Kitty, no! She looks so sad, I hate it. And she had to swim too. Oh my god, I'm so sorry. He is a very, very sneaky drink. If you go crouch here, the fight doesn't trigger and you can skip the entire morphic pool fight. The dice rolls here don't matter apart from the very last one. She's actually so cute. We got forced into a long rest, losing all of our buffs. Anyways, I'm gonna shoot the Emperor in the ass because I hate him. We are done. You thought that was gonna end the run, didn't you? Shadow Sweetie freed Orpheus and persuaded him to become a mind flayer. Look, it's Shadow Cute, alright? Not Shadow Squid. Regarding this decision, it didn't feel right making Shadow Heart a mind flayer, and it fit the theme of this run a bit better. Reaching in the upper city, I had a logistical issue. I only had one in this pot left. I really hope I don't miss here. Okay, that's a relief. We started running past the enemies. Oh my god, the reverb scared me. I'm gonna head through the door here, then go to the left here. A cutscene will trigger, but it doesn't matter. Okay, so I'm gonna fly over here and fly to the top here through the scum. 
triggering another cutscene. I selected Orpheus and made him drink an elixir of vigilance. I really need him to go fast. My strategy is quite simple. What I'm going to do is pass as many stacks of Fizz Perilous Stakes as possible. Every single stack gives an additional 15 psychic damage. I'm going to cast it and again and again and again and again and again and I'm going to turn base it here, casting it another two times. Remember that scroll we got from the bombs? I also have six stacks of Perilous Stakes. You gotta see this. Okay, that did a lot of damage to the dragon. So the Fuse Perilous Tanks added 90 damage to every instance here. I'm just going to spam these arrows. Pass Great Moon Viz. Oh my god, I just stunned him. Yo, check this out. Orpheus is going to miss his next turn. Whoopsie. Wait, he's not stunned? That's win. Okay, um, I'm surprised it hit everyone. Shadok, you can arrow me any day. I'm gonna move Orpheus closer. Going to try to at least. I didn't want to be grabbed by another tentacle. So I'm just gonna disengage and fly him. After Orpheus started channeling on the crown, we faced our biggest threat yet, the AI. No, not me, silly. The tentacle AI. Larian. No, Larian. You literally can't move. Like, what's it thinking about? The portal opened and I sent Orpheus in by himself. I used him to cast magic missile, triggering the reaction of the elder brain. This way, Shadowheart is unaffected. Okay, we have one turn here. Potion a speed here. Okay, I'm gonna fly right next to the brain. Hey, the brain has aura of murder on it. So I'm gonna use the aberration arrows I've been buying. I did uh, 149 damage. I don't know how much damage that was, but I'm pretty close right now. Okay, let's send another one. That didn't get him, so I'm going to surge in. And we're going to finish the job with one last arrow. Shadow Kitty, um, what are you doing with that knife? There are many in the city and beyond who are in desperate need of Lady Shah's embrace. You shall help them, of course, and relish every moment of it. It's been a fun series. I really loved playing solo. So we spent 11 hours on it. So anyways, Shadaki's robe is so gorgeous. You know what else is gorgeous? Aside from Shadaki, what I'm trying to say is you are. Thank you for watching. And a personal thank you to all my lovely patrons. Shah's blessing upon you. She loves you. She must.